Hello, hello folks, and welcome back to my channel. Today is a video that y'all have been asking me for, for forever, my septum stretching journey. Uh, so I've already talked a little bit about my ear stretching journey uh, and how I stretch my ears up to my wonderful uh, 38 millimeter lobes. And I've even talked about my tongue stretching journey because yes, I had a stretch tongue piercing for many years. Uh, but everyone really wants to hear about my septum stretching journey. So now this is going to kind of be my experience with septum stretching and if you want me to do like a more tutorial type video about stretching your septum at home um, or working with a piercer to stretch your septum, let me know. Uh, but like most of us, I was a painfully desperate like emo alternative kid in high school whose parents uh, were very hesitant about letting me get a lot of the piercings that were cool in these scenes. Finally, when I was like 16 or 17, I convinced my mom to let me get my septum pierced and it was all downhill from there. I had it done at a 14 gauge and I'm trying to see if I have pictures from that time. I have a couple, um, but I started stretching my septum like basically as soon as I could. The moment my septum was healed and I was able to start stretching again, I was stretching it. I had seen pictures of like cool big stretch septums online. I thought they looked amazing and I wasn't stretching my ears yet. I didn't start stretching my ears um, until I was actually working in a studio. Uh, so I wanted to stretch something. I think I was, I might have already been stretching my tongue at this time or I might have started stretching my septum first. I don't honestly remember which came first, um, but they were in pretty quick succession with each other because I pretty quickly like fell in love with the process of stretching. Um, I started stretching with continuous pieces. Um, I think I got pinchers. I, I know there's pictures of me somewhere in like a black Gorilla Glass like 10 gauge septum pincher. Um, but I was really like back and forth on whether or not I preferred um, like stacked looks or like larger, bigger pieces. However, my sweet spot in my septum is pretty small and I had my septum done when I was still early on in high school before I really understood like quality safe body piercing. Um, so it wasn't done terribly, but it wasn't done great. Uh, and I was really nervous about denting. When you're stretching your septum piercing, um, you know, we pierce it in that soft spot, that little flexible cartilage at the tip of your nose, but that soft spot is surrounded by hard, thick cartilage, especially the septal cartilage that actually makes up the septal wall. And the larger you stretch, eventually you're gonna kind of run into that cartilage and it's not gonna displace the way like the skin on your earlobes displaces or even the tissue in your tongue displaces. Um, basically, you reach a certain point and your jewelry just starts rubbing at and eroding that hard cartilage. And uh, it's notoriously an unpleasant process. Uh, this was like in the early days of some of the Facebook groups and there was still some activity on BME. And so I was just reading lots of threads of people complaining about how awful denting was. Uh, and I really uh, didn't wanna deal with that. So I think I got it to about a 10 gauge uh, and then I started stacking. As I think either still in high school or just out of high school at the time, um, so you know, I was not made of money. Um, so I was using uh, niobium seam rings, black niobium seam rings to stack with because they were super affordable. They were like 10 or $15. They're like 10 or $15 even today, like almost a decade later. <laughs> so very affordable pieces. And we can see a picture of one of my early stacks while here. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> I didn't have the best phone at the time and I didn't always take a lot of selfies and pictures so I don't have any um, like before this but I've already got my two niobium seam rings in and at this point I had started working in a studio and really wanted to change my stuff over to gold um, because that's what all my co-workers wore and the gold stuff was just so pretty um, so I think this is when I had just gotten that opal clicker for the front of my stack in from Maria Tosh and I was like I'm in love with this uh, and I want to start switching over to gold um, and this was like my early baby stack and I just really loved the stacked look and around this time period was when you were starting to see more stacked septums online like when I had first gotten my septum pierced in high school I had seen like the big tusks uh, and I'd, <laughs> I'd also seen like the little mustache pieces, uh, which I was obsessed with. Mustaches had that chokehold on us in like the mid 2000s. Um, but this was around the time when I was starting to see more pictures of stack septums online. And I was 
in love. I thought they were so cool. Um, so here is my stack right after I swapped it over to a gold piece. Um, and you can see here, previously, I was wearing two 18 gauge Niobium seams and then my 16 gauge clicker. And in this, I have just my 16 gauge clicker and then a 14 gauge gold seam ring. Um, so it looks like I lost size in my stack, but I actually didn't because the new piece I put in was thicker. Um, but that was a 14 gauge BVLA gold seam that had been ordered for a client that had never been picked up um, that my boss let me have in exchange for some extra time worked. Uh, and that thing fits so snug in my nose and was so hard to get in. <laughs> like all three piercers of the shop were gathered around me on this table trying to get this ring closed in my nose. It was such a nightmare. Um, it <laughs> I'm so sorry, Zach for making you do that looking back now. I'm so sorry. Uh, also in this picture you can see that I tried um, stacking some seam rings, uh, niobium as well, in my labrette piercings. Um, this did not last. This was a horrible idea. I wore it for maybe three days before taking it out because the rings constantly like moved when I was eating and talking and pinched my lip and hurt like crazy and also got way too much food and stuff collected in them. Um, that was a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, and then here we are a couple months later. Um, this is me. I think I took these pictures to show up my new lift clickers. Um, you can see my stack pretty well here. It's grown by a couple rings. I think in this photo there's four or five rings. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I think there's like four or five rings in here. Like I'm kind of starting to get the hang of this stacking thing. Now this was before there was too much information available online about stacking. So I do remember, I do remember having some rough times. Um, this picture would have been when I was working at Firebody Arts and I definitely remember like a two week time period in the winter um, when I had added some stuff to my stack despite the fact that it was winter and my nose was already stuffy and irritated. Um, I was very smart, just, I'm such a smart client. Uh, and just like the worst shooting pain in my nose randomly for days and days on end, like, like so painful. Um, and septum stretching, you know, it doesn't feel great. It, if anyone is like, oh yeah, septum stretching is so easy, like it's no big deal, it's like ear stretching. Um, they are lying to you. They are lying. Um, Septum stretching can be really spicy and really, really, really uncomfortable. Um, some stretches are gonna be, you know, not that bad, uh, but how it tricks you is there's like this false sense of things being fine. Cause you'll go and you'll stretch up and you'll put the jewelry in and it won't feel that bad. Uh, and then you'll wake up the next morning or the morning after that and it feels like someone punched you in the nose and it's very uncomfortable. I remember dealing with some like really, really bad pain for like a, a couple of weeks. Um, and we figured out it was because the rings were crisscrossed and they were rubbing and pinching inside of my nose. And at this point I was stretching with seam rings because they were um, just a little bit cheaper and a little bit more affordable. Again, I was pretty young still at the time, uh, you know, we're balling on a budget. Uh, but I had to have one of my coworkers like open and remove two of the seams and like readjust my stack and put them back in. And uh, it was, it was pretty rough. Uh, it was pretty painful, not gonna lie. Uh, but I didn't let it dissuade me, you know? I knew septum stretching could be uncomfortable, and overall my experience stacking seemed to be much more pleasant than other people's experience stretching with a single larger ring, um, especially given that I had a small sweet spot and my initial septum piercing wasn't like super perfect. Uh, so overall, I was having a pretty smooth time of things because I saw people posting online or talking about stretching their septum, especially to like really big sizes, like zero and half inch and talking about just it being like super painful with some stretches and denting. So overall, I was not that mad with how the stacking process was going for me. Every like three or so months, I was adding a new ring. Um, and if things were taking longer to adjust or they were tender, I just waited a little longer. Um, and a lot of times I kind of skipped over stacking in winter because I knew my nose got irritated. So overall, not too shabby. Now in this photo, um, I'll, I'll throw up the whole post here, but I say that I've hit my goal size, which was a two gauge. Um, and I do a breakdown of the rings that I have in my stack at this point. Um, just like a self call out here, but isn't it so funny how we always have like one goal size in mind and then most people just, we blow right past it and we keep going. Um, 
I am not immune to that either. Um, so this is me over here thinking like, oh, like a two gauge on my stack, like this will be where I'm stopping. Uh, here I am a couple months later sitting at around like nine or ten millimeters. I'm like at a zero gauge uh, Some threads online and some piercer groups and looked at some pictures and I looked at how stacks sat in people's noses who had Stretched with round pieces and especially people who had been wearing round pieces for like a very long time before they started to stack Folks who had stretched their septums big like 10 or 20 years ago um, and were now deciding to stack and I didn't like how the stacks laid as much in those noses. I really liked how my stack sat because I had chosen to stretch by stacking. Everything sat really neatly and orderly. Everything followed the shape and like the curvature of my nose down. Um, and I got a lot of compliments about how my stack sat from clients, um, but also from colleagues in the industry. I had people who were like, wow, your stack sits like so nice or I love how your rings lay. Like, how did you do that? And I was like, I just chose to stretch by stacking. Um, so while there was a part of me that really, you know, and there is still like the smallest part of me that would love to wear like a giant circular for an event or an occasion, um, or like a big pincher or something for a night out. Um, overall, I'm way happier with the stack and it was way more practical for my nose and my septum. And my septum journey was a little bit easier doing stacking. Um, so no regrets there. Uh, but as per usual, you know, we don't listen to our goal sizes. So here I am a couple months later uh, with like even more rings in my stack. You can see that this is, I have jammed uh, every ring that I can possibly fit into my nose at this point. Uh, and this was also the point when I decided to switch to clickers for my stacking journey, uh, because at this point I was fucking done with seam rings. Uh, because I I would deal with and struggle from time to time seams becoming slightly misaligned, especially in a big stack like mine, and especially where I was wearing big decorative pieces. You have to understand, like, my opal piece with all those prong settings and stuff, my stack was so big that that whole thing could rotate completely 360 degrees around in my nose. Um, as it is, this, like, um, pupil hall piece, the entanglement with all these big swirls on it, I can rotate almost this entire I can rotate this whole ring through my nose I just did it right there uh, this whole piece spins around in my septum um, and so these fancier pieces were getting caught on the seams on some of my seam rings and they would misalign them sometimes especially because I was wearing a lot of 18 and 16 gauge seams which weren't you know quite as stable as the bigger sizes and all it took in a stack was like the teeniest tiniest misalignment of a seam and I, I was like the princess in the pea. I would just wake up in the morning and I would just know that one of the seams was off. I would just do a little like, and I, I would just feel wrong. And it would drive me, at, it, it was maddening until I could figure out which ring it was and fix it. But of course they were all seam rings. So they were all a gigantic pain in my ass to have to try and adjust and fix all the time. And I'm saying this as someone who was working in the industry. And at this point in time, I was working seven days a week. So I always had a piercer every day who could fix my seams if they became unaligned. Um, but it was annoying, it was very painful when it happened, and I was just over it. So I switched everything to clickers. It was easier, I felt like they were more comfortable, they were way easier to get in and out to change my stack and make it more versatile. Um, yeah, the clickers were more expensive, and it was especially sucked for me because I had to buy like eight clickers all at one time to swap over my stack, and uh, looking back, I wish I would have just saved up and started stretching with clickers from the beginning because it would have been way easier to buy like one new clicker every whatever like I don't know like three to five months between stretches would have been no big deal um, rather than having to buy eight all at once um, was 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 not cheap uh, but I, I switched my whole stack over to clickers and that was like one of the best choices I ever made in my septum stretching journey. Uh, but that's a thing that I feel like not enough people tell you about with septum stretching, uh, especially stacking, is that you will be able to just, your decorative pieces, that whole thing is going to rotate right through your nose when your stack gets big. You're going to wake up in the morning with prong set gemstones just literally inside your nose. Um, not inside your nostrils, like inside your nose. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that's not great. And sometimes stuff does get very boogery and jewelry does get pretty gross because it's literally inside your nose. Uh, but from here, like at this point, I really couldn't 
add too many more rings to my stack my like if you look at this picture again this stack is literally like it's the width of my nose the back ring is touching my lip and the front ring is touching the front of my nostrils like there's 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 no more room for other jewelry to go uh, and unlike stretching with round pieces I wasn't going to start pushing up into that upper cartilage or down um which is sometimes called septum droop uh this is not really going to happen with stacking uh so this was my max so I started playing with more decorative jewelry options in it and here we have I love this setup. This is me with the Jadis clicker from Other Couture in the back of my stack. That is probably the most statement piece I own for my septum stack and she's beautiful. Uh, that was actually the first Jadis ever made. Uh, it's an amethyst and a white topaz and woo, she is pretty. Um, and then here I am a while later, I got my Chrysophrase set. So this is me with uh, the Marilyn from BVLA, I believe is that piece, and Chrysophrase and Champagne Sapphires in the front of my stack. Um, super pretty, love that piece as well. Uh, and now I just kind of bop back and forth. I, uh, I've been wearing the Entanglement from People Hall in the front of my stack for like, I don't know, half a year now. Uh, I really like it. I like the simplicity of the piece, it's fun. Uh, I still own all of the other clickers and all of the other pieces you saw uh, in these pictures. So like every now and again, I get a wild hair and I change the pieces in and out. And the nice thing about having clickers for my septum stack is that it's super easy to change them in and out and it's super easy to take them out to clean them. But that was a little, uh, that was a walk down memory lane and down my septum stretching journey from a uh, wee baby Lynn with just a, a simple tiny little new septum piercing uh, all the way up to me today. I currently have We've got 10 in there right now. Um, it, it alternates, 11 is the most that I wear at once and that's when I'm wearing basically all my 18 gauge pieces and like one 16 or 14 gauge piece. And then sometimes I like to do like a, what I call like my double or triple stack. So I have a decorative ring in the front and one in the back and then sometimes one in the middle. And a lot of my decorative stuff is in 16 and 14 gauge. So I take out more of the plain clickers that make up like the meat or the middle of my stack to put in those decorative pieces. So sometimes I go all the way back down to like seven or eight rings in my stack at once, um, but I'm still always roughly at around 11 to 12 millimeters just based off of the amount of rings and the gauge that I have in my nose. Uh, for me, I absolutely adored the process of septum stretching. I thought the journey was so fantastic and so fun. Uh, it was definitely very different than stretching my ears or stretching anything else for that matter. And I would say my septum stretching was probably the most uncomfortable stretching I did. Uh, and I say this as someone who's experimented with stretching like <laughs> almost all of my piercings at one point or another. Um, my septum was it's not great. It's not great. Uh, it's not terrible by any means. It's not the end of the world, um, but it's definitely not awesome. There's like a specific brand of tenderness that comes with a freshly stretched septum. That's just not fantastic. Uh, but I, I love my stretched septum to death. I have literally zero regrets. I'm actually so happy I ended up going with stacking. I think long term, it just fits my aesthetic a lot better. It was more comfortable for me and for the jewelry I like. It was perfect. So yeah, that was my satchel stretching journey. Uh, I hope you enjoyed coming along uh, through all of these old pictures and looking at my journey with my nose. And if you have any questions about this process um, and about it, leave them down in the comments down below. And you know what, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try and make like a septum stretching guide. Would like, Okay, here's what you can help me with. Should I split it up into two, one for stretching with round pieces and one for stacking, or should I put them both in one like massive video? I should probably split it up, right? That way it's not too long. I'll let you tell me in the comments. As per usual, if you like my content, please hit like and subscribe. Your support means so much to me, and I hope to sit down and hang out with you soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.